From Buffalo Wild Wings on 19th Avenue in Fargo, welcome to Benchwarmers. Today's featured guests are Sports Director at WDAY-TV, Dom Izzo. Sports Writer for the Fargo Forum, Jeff Kolpak. Play-by-play -play voice for NDSU football, Brian Sean. And our host, Midco Sports Network's Tom Neiman. Hello, welcome to Bench Warmers. We're at Buffalo Wild Wings, Fargo, North Dakota. And we have loaded the lineup with more brain power than usual this week. We'll get to these guys and talk about a lot of stuff. But the Fargo Dome is right across the street here from Buffalo Wild Wings, home of North Dakota State University football, which is on one of the most incredible runs in college football history, in FCS football history for sure, four national championships in a row. And let's start with that. Is there any chance that that changes this year? Please say yes, because everybody else in the country wants the answer to that to be yes. But what is it really changed this year, Jeff? They look pretty good to me. Only the difference this year, I think, is uh, defense carried them for so long. Those four years, I think it was the best def yeah. defense in the FCS, no question. They, lo they finally lost these guys. I mean, they've been there forever, yeah. it seems like. They've been playing 60 games. This year it's the offense, and we were talking about Carson Wentz. There's a name that I think is going to get a lot of play this year. All right. That's the biggest difference, obviously, now the offense can carry this team. I mean, they have a guy who's getting drip mentioned on Mel Kuyper draft boards. He's getting mentioned in first-day conversation in the NFL draft, which has never happened right. before, that maybe this offense can make the defense better during fall camp, which is a scary proposition. But there could be times where NDSU plays a Big Sky game where it's 40 to 37, which we're not used to seeing, but very well could happen and this early in the season. It's not maybe. like the offense was bad no, last they year. Got one better one game maybe against Northern yeah. Iowa, but, yeah. that, but that was it. But yeah, the defense now, you lose Little John and Hegel and yep. Thornton and Dudzik and Emmanuel and Hardy. Those are huge names over the last four years. So yeah. what happens to the defense? Well, I, I think the biggest concern defensively is probably safety because I, I just don't know if they really feel great about their safeties right now. When you lose Dudzik and Hegel, those two guys knew everything, bookends from every which way. Now they're talking about using Chris Board as kind of a safety slash outside linebacker, and Andrew Smith comes in, and Trey Dempsey was really a slot corner. Now he's going to be kind of more of a safety, safety guy, and he's going to have to play some different spots in nickel. So uh, to me, that's the bigger concern than even linebacker. Because I think with DeLuca, I think Stump's been there a long time, understands, and certainly I think Tucker has the, the ability, just has to stay healthy. And I think, they have, I think they do have defensive linemen. Maybe not a great guy like Kyle Emanuel, but more depth than they've had there in the past. There are guys, though, Tom, that have never played in the big spot. MJ Stump, Pierre G. Tucker, what Brian's talking about, they've never started a game. They've never had the big spotlight, and they're going to be playing at Montana to start. And that's the biggest litmus test they're going to have, is that they've never had this kind of spotlight on them, and they're going to get thrown right into the fire. But who was the kid last year that came in at linebacker uh, that had never played before and went lights out? Who? Well, Nick DeLuca, yeah, DeLuca. took okay, over, yeah. Travis Beck yeah. got hurt. Yeah. And you talk about a guy who looks the part, 6'3", 240, he's yeah. like you. 6'3", yeah. <laughs> yeah. 240, yeah. runs a 4'5", or something like that. I mean, this guy, and he played well, actually, in the playoffs, yes. too. He was their best player in the playoffs, all right. And we've heard this tune before, that there's guys to replace and they've done it. I mean, Bull leaves, Kleiman comes in. Jensen leaves, Wentz comes in, just pick up where they left off. There's there's some questions defensively, but. All right, talk about the other side of the football with Carson Wentz, a little bit, kid from Bismarck, um, got all the tools. Why are the people talking about him being an NFL quarterback possibly in another year? <laughs> well, he's 6'6", six, six to yeah. start off, 6'6". Six, six. <laughs> you talk about the measurables, 232 pounds, I think he is right now. And how about the mind? I yes. mean, he's a 4.0 student. I remember when he was a true freshman, the coaches were marveled at you know, how did he make that read? Yeah, you know, calling that, audibles the last Calling year. audibles yeah. as a, as a yeah. true freshman in fall camp. Yeah. So, you know, those are some of the things you look for, I think, in a quarterback. He's got the arm. I mean, that's the biggest thing, too. And, and Brian will attest this for calling the games, he can run like a deer. The Youngstown State yeah. game last year, he made a move where he came to the outside, then cut back across the field. I think he ran like 70 yards, just weaving. And that no other quarterback in the FCS, in my mind, Trey Roberson maybe, but he doesn't have the arm that Wentz does. And his measurables, you guys talked about that, are off the chart. But when you talk to Randy Hedberg, the quarterback's coach, he said that if he goes in that John Gruden quarterback camp thing, he will blow everybody away on that. I mean, this guy is r making all the checks for the line of scrimmage, all the pre-snap stuff. He sees where everything is supposed to go. He has such a great handle on what's going on in the field, and that is really important, I think, for that offense to have, a, like, essentially a coach on the field. And there were some preseason teams that came out, and they didn't have him no. in the top four or five 
not even the top three in the yeah. Valley, which yeah. I think was just being polite because everybody knew that he was going to get some recognition. True. I, it's it's hard to believe it was, I, I, I was I would, amazing. Yeah, the broadcasters. I would tell you, up, it, it, I voted for Carson Wentz. That's not to say that Trey Roberson is not a great quarterback, but if he's honorable mention in his own league and he might be a, I don't know, a second or third round draft pick, just tells you the kind of quarterback play that's in this conference. All right, and at the running back spot, offensively, not a lot of holes to fill. But John Crockett's gone. Yep. King Frazier slips in there, or what? What happens at running back? I think it's going to be a multiple attack right now. I think you got King Frazier, you got Chase Morlock, the kid from Moorhead. Look out for Lance Dunn. I, he's a true or a redshirt freshman from Waterloo, Iowa. I thought in spring football showed some things. Yeah. It's going to be back to by committee, like it was for the first couple of title runs where it was Sam O'Jury, yeah. DJ McNorton, and Crockett into the mix. Now all three of these guys, and possibly all at the same time. That happened in a game a couple times. We remember the Montana game. They don't really have a name for it yet. I think we were trying to come we got, up, we got to come we up, got to come with up the for name. a name yeah. for it. But we're all three were in the game at the same time, and that that's a scary proposition for a lot of defenses. And, and Wentz can run, too. Yes. Yeah. So the answer to the question is no. How much is going to change? Well, I, and, and, well, I think there's more would, of an opportunity this year for other I teams. Don't know, and I, I don't know, and this is a question for you guys, if the value would be as good. You remember last year, it was the best it had ever been. They only lost two games outside of, of league play. I don't know if the league can be as good like it we was We don't last know year. mainly. That you said the five new head coaches. Yeah. That's the that's 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 what you were right. gonna say, and that's I was the big say five unknown. return quarterbacks. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 And all the new head coaches yes. in the league yeah. too. Is Missouri State gonna be that much better? Polina Youngstown. Yeah, they have a young quarterback. How are Northern they going Iowa, to be? I think, is trending down. I don't I, think they're gonna be as. Good. It's hard to say though. You know, they always seem to find players. It, they it's, do. These, some of these programs, it, we're gonna know a lot more after the first two weeks because NDSU opens at South Dakota yep. State, then Northern Iowa comes here for homecoming. Yes. We're going to know a lot more at that point, I think, where the Valley sits. All right, the numbers in the last four years for the North Dakota State University football team, 58 wins and three losses, which is just mind-blowing. Um, you guys remember the losses? One yeah. last year? Yep, Northern Iowa. Northern Iowa. Youngstown State. Youngstown was 2011. 2011. And then Indiana State. And two of those were yeah. here at home, yes. right? Yes. And those were all, and Jeff will point to this to me, is those teams were able to run the ball. Indiana State and Youngstown State were able to run it against uh, NDSU's defense. Now, the Indiana State game brought Jensen through two pick sixes, yeah, and was... the defense only gave up three points that day. But that Youngstown game and the Northern Iowa game last year, they were able to run the ball against the Bison defense. So you're saying maybe they'll try to run the ball? I would think a lot of people have tried, and no, it hasn't worked. Well, that's where South Dakota State is going to be. They lost Zach Zanner, yeah. who, you know, NDSU held them down until the last the year a little game. bit, the playoffs. Yeah. But uh, that's where. I think FCS football comes down to two things, Tom. One, your quarterback, and two, your defensive line and your run defense. Yep. And if you can do those two things, yep. uh, you have a big leg up on most of the other teams. All right. So in issue, he's got a quarterback. They've got, but do they have a defensive line? That's, 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 that's what we're going to find out. I think they're going to be as much deeper, and I think they'll hopefully take some reps off, reps off of those, especially those nose tackles up front. And I think they might actually be better as a group instead of relying on one guy to be there. Good grief. All right, we're going to talk a little bit more about the schedule, which uh, looks pretty favorable for the uh, Bison this year. And uh, the Missouri Valley a little bit. Why does everybody think Youngstown State is going to take a step up this year with Bo Pelini as the head coach there? More Bison football with these guys when we come back on Bench Warmers. Bench Warmers on Midco Sports Network is presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. Welcome back to Bench Warmers. We are in Fargo, North Dakota this week. A lot of bison football. In just, uh, just over two weeks, North Dakota State opens up the season at Montana, a game on ESPN. And you look down the schedule, we got a poll question coming up later. Will the bison go undefeated again this year and win their fifth national championship? The regular season looks like a very good possibility. But let's talk about a game at the end of the regular season, yeah. Dom. Youngstown State <laughs> at Youngstown State. Bo Pelini, the former Nebraska coach, takes over there. They're bringing some... Big time transfers yeah. in there. Why is everybody thinking Youngstown is going to be so I good? I think just his name, the name recognition, and they were so close last year. They have been. You know, they've been a win and in situation the last couple of years. All they had to do was beat either the Bison or the Jacks in 2013. They make it. They lose both at home last year. If they somehow beat NDSU or Indiana State, they make the playoffs. They lost both. It cost Eric Wolf for his job. I look, Hunter Wells is a sophomore quarterback. He played as a true freshman last year. He won a game at Brookings. I thought he was really good. Martin Ruiz is now a junior at tailback. I really like what they have there. Defensively wise, they have some big guys up front like Colpac was talking about where you can win on the defensive line. 
Now, Pelini's the big thing with him, he could never win the big one in Nebraska. That's ironic that that's the thing at Youngstown that they, they haven't been able to do. I just, it, there's, they're too talented not to make the Well, here's the thing about Youngstown, you alluded to it. They're good in September, October. Yeah. It's November that he needs to they, change they, around. Yeah, they, they've really struggled there. Does it sound a little bit like he's doing a little quick fix, though, with some of these FBS I, transfers? I think so, in. and their schedule sets up. They don't play anybody in the non-conference. They play at Pitt, then they play two FCS you know, cupcakes before they get to the Valley schedule. But they have to go. They have Illinois State early in the season. That If they somehow knock them off, we'll yeah, see what happens right. there. And the That's Bison, wide open. Bison do not play Illinois State Correct. in the season again yeah. this year, but... Yes, sir. It's funny how it's funny how everything works out with the schedule. It only stays not on the schedule. Yeah. They don't have to see Copper or Roberson again potentially until they they get to the to the playoffs. But I think going back to your point with Youngstown State, the one thing you talked about with Pelini, you could never win the big one. And, was, and you look at his career record, it's really good. But when you looked against really good teams, what his career record was, it was terrible. And not only did they lose those games, they got embarrassed in those games. And I think that was the part that was hard for Nebraska fans. You can't lose like 70 to 21 to Wisconsin in a Big Ten championship game. You know, that, that's been the issue. So can, can he take them over the top? That's going to be You guys looking forward to going down there and grilling Pelini? I am. <laughs> as, as media members? I can't wait till I get yelled at. Absolutely. You will, highlights. yes. <laughs> Poor guy. The people there, have been, the, the re beat reporters and reporters there say he's it's way different so from what far, they thought he yeah, so far now, so Again, good, that can so. change in a hurry, but I this is to, way less pressure. Gotta remember, way less he's pressure. on his, probably his best behavior after what happened in Nebraska. Well, you got to remember, when Craig Ball came from Nebraska after getting fired, uh, he was shell shocked. I mean, he yeah. just went into bunker mode right away in mm -hmm. 03 and 04 when he first got the job. Then he, you know, relaxed a little bit. Yeah. So I'm sure Pelini, after, I mean, that, that's a firestorm down yeah. there. All right. On this subject, Craig Bowl now at, the, at Wyoming. The Big Ten has come out again and said, we're not going to schedule FCS teams, Missouri Valley teams, after 2016. All right, whatever. Maybe they'll change, maybe they won't. Will Wyoming ever be on the North Dakota State? Oh, my goodness. No, no, will that ever not with this current no staff. No, no, no. Not as long as Bulls there. Not no, a chance. Yeah, not with this current staff. No way. Not a chance. That's done. That's the end of that discussion. I, <laughs> Jeff, I, Jeff's with the mindset, and I tend to agree with him. The FBS may be gone altogether. I mean, just who's going to play them right now? Outside of, unless NDSU wants to go and schedule Oregon or Alabama or Florida State, there's no. Conference USA, Sun Belt team, MAC team, they're not yeah. going to answer the phone. They're not yeah. going to call. The back. Iowa game was scheduled in 2011 right. for next year, for yeah. 2016. There has been no phone calls returned no. from the 701 zip code <laughs> since then. <laughs> and there won't be. They're 8-3 and three against FBS teams. Why yeah. would you? And there's not one on the schedule this year. Is Correct. that a disappointment? No, right. Is that kind of a letdown? I, I think that they're kind of they're making the Montana game. The players are, at least. I think fan-wise, that is... Sometimes that's the buildup. The K-State game, there were people were talking about that for a couple of years ahead of time. Iowa State the same way. The Iowa game next year will be that. And then, it's a big question mark right now. And the Big Ten is killing itself on that. Because you can't tell me that Purdue, Indiana, Illinois, Minnesota wouldn't want, they need that game to and, make a bowl the, game. the commissioner says why. Why will he? does he not want him to play? That they, they think it helps to make the college football playoff. We're legitimately, what? Really? Two, Ball, two, Ball State's going to yeah. help you? I two mean, teams are going to make the college football playoff out of the Big Ten. You know who's smiling you know? are the mid-American yeah, conference absolutely. schools. Yeah. Their, their value just went up to Wait, a yeah. million dollars yeah. on these games. Yeah. You know, instead of having to pay five. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's what makes you wonder, when is the time for an exit strategy? At what point do you get, if you're NDSU, do you at least look at the possibility of an exit strategy. Wasn't even going to bring it up, but since you did. <laughs> you know what? There's I'm not saying you got to do it, but if you're looking 10 years down the road, okay. and Matt Larson is a very sharp guy, yep. that's something they at least have to look at in 10 yep. years, this college landscape, because at what point does it not make it sense? It depends on what level of football. I think yeah. NDSU will always want to be that second level Agreed. of football, whatever that may be. Right. All right, not Power 5, but somewhere. No. Right. Whatever okay. that may be. Yes. If it's, right. conference, it's with the group of five, you know, the yeah. Conference USA, the MAC, the Sun Belt, they can, I think they can compete with that. Yeah, Mountain West, but, absolutely. Right, but yeah. they, Power uh, Five, Group of Five, right. FCS, yeah. somewhere in that Somewhere middle. in that mix. I but think. not in two years, but 10 years yeah. is really. College football is going to look way different anyway in five years than what we know Okay, right you now. try to sell a half cent sales tax to the city of Fargo to build a new stadium. <laughs> <laughs> you try. Yeah. Good luck on that. Good luck. One yeah. last thing on the schedule. North Dakota is on the schedule yeah. this year, a game, uh, I believe, in Grand Forks. No, right? in Fargo. It, it is here. Yep, it is Fargo. here. Yep. Is this a big deal or not? Does anybody care? Depends on who you talk to. Right. I think I think it is a big deal I, I only agree. because it's the first time they played in a long time. But if people that want to talk about it being a rivalry game, I don't think you know, some people say, well that you know, it's it's a rivalry game. I don't think it is a rivalry game. What? I think Northern Iowa and South Dakota State are rivalry games. When you're playing a team once every five or ten years, it's not a rivalry game. It just isn't. 
It can't be. It's a rivalry game, nah. Brian. It's the University nah. of North Dakota versus NDSU. It was 15 years ago. All right, you tell ago. me after that game it's not a rivalry game. Nah, it won't it, be. I think it is. I, I'm really interested for the North Dakota guys on the Bison roster and the UND roster it's, who grew up with yeah. it but haven't seen it in 12 years. I think it means a lot. I've talked to four or five of them. This is their Super Bowl. They can't wait for this game. Now, for it, you talk to the Bison fans, the silent, I don't want to say silent, the loud minority of them, they wonder why they're playing the right. game. They don't need the game. <clears throat> but it makes no sense not to play. We're it's going dark than, on social media, though. Yeah, We're I think going we need dark. To. It's better than playing somebody else that nobody right. oh, yeah. it's, good. it's great to have them on the schedule. Absolutely. It's awesome. Don't get me wrong. But unless you're going to play them every year, every other year, to me, it's just kind of a novelty. That's all it turns into. All right. Once again, poll question coming up later. Will the Bison run the table again this year, win their fifth national championship, and go undefeated? We will find out about that. A little grab bag when we come back. We'll talk about a kid from uh, Fargo here, a running back at the University of Minnesota. PGA Championships coming up. The New York Mets are still in the lead in the National League East. We'll talk about that when we come back. Benchwarmers on Midco Sports Network is presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. Welcome back to Bench Warmers, Fargo, North Dakota. We are at Buffalo Wild Wings. We're going to play a little speed round here with these geniuses and get some, some quick answers. Talk about the uh, New York Mets. Don Rizzo's New York Mets still leading the National League East by a game and a half. Yep. What, 50 games left? About that. Can they keep it up and win? Uh, pitching, absolutely. They, they do, if they added some bats, the Nationals are super good, and I would count them out, but... It's always tradition that they choke sometime in September, so I'm waiting for the, the rug to be pulled out. But that they're one, two, three guys. Harvey, Syndergaard, DeGrom. Man, that's hard to beat. And they're going to get Steven Matz back as a rookie left-hander who's really, really good. All right. Fun to see him we'll up see. there, though, at this point, though, right? <laughs> I'm huh? ready for it, yes. All right. Um, North Coast State Wrestling, along with South Coast State, is going to join the Big 12 in wrestling, Jeff. Is this a big deal? Is this even a blip on the radar up here? That's great for the sport because... Wrestling was in this thing called the Western Wrestling Conference, which is like the old Great West football, yeah. little contrived league to get your schools together. This is legitimate now, but now they have to fund it. You know, now they're going to have to try to match cost of attendance at these Big 12 schools, and you're going to have to raise your recruiting budget, and you're going to have to do all those things. But for the sport, I, I think it's uh, it's fabulous. Raises the profile a lot. All right, uh, Brian Shaw, the PGA Championship starts this week, and we got Spieth and McElroy is going to play. Those two and Zach Johnson are going to be paired up in the first couple of rounds. Yeah. Of those three, who do you like? Spieth. Spieth is Mr. Consistency, man. Had he had another five holes at the British Open, who knows what would have happened there. And he's just playing so well. And again, McElroy is always a threat, but coming off a ruptured ankle issue, I mean, that's going to be tough for him for four rounds on a pretty difficult golf course at Whistling Straits. So I, I like Spieth. All right, another golf question, Dom. Who is Tom Hoagie? Fargo's superstar right now on the PGA Tour. Jeff and I have been covering him for a long time. I know Brian did as well. Uh, from Fargo South, went and played at TCU, where Dave Schultz went, obviously went as well. Uh, made the PGA Tour last year as a rookie. Uh, struggled early this season. Now he seemed to have found his groove. Uh, has had two top 10 finishes in the last month. It looks like he's got his card for 2016 lineup. Now it's about making the FedEx Cup playoffs, which is a boatload more prestige and money. He's. I think he's got what it takes. He's got the swing. Uh, he's got the drive. It's about finding it on the short, the short game and on the green to really be consistent at the PGA if you, Tour. But if you watch the PGA Tour this year, yeah. you've seen his he's name been up on there. a lot of leaderboards. Yep, he's been there. All right, Brian. Um, James Johannesson, kid from Fargo South High School here. Going to be a running back. He's a freshman this year at the University of Minnesota. Chances for him to make that team? Or what, what are his prospects with the Gophers? You know, I, I think it, it's almost tempting maybe for because when they look at his speed numbers, I mean, he's like the second fastest running back on the roster when you look at the speed numbers. Might be tempted to, for special teams to have him there. I don't think that's the best thing for him, but it'd be kind of exciting to have him just unleash in that opportunity. But I, I think he, the measurable's there. I think the love for the game is there. I'm excited for what the future holds for him at that position because I really do believe that he's one of those few kids from North Dakota at a skill position that can make it a power five school. Yeah, the talk is to move him to linebacker and move him on defense. That's what everyone's talked about. He's committed to playing running back. I think the coaches at Minnesota are committed to at least see what he has at running back. I, playing this year should not be an option, though. All right. Speaking of the University of Minnesota, Jeff, they just had an athletic director resign because of inappropriate sexual harassment. Should we be surprised in this day and age that men are still behaving this boorishly? Well, nothing surprises me in the world of sports, unfortunately, but 
I want to, boy, when it comes to the social media, you, you got to put the phone away. And, and some of the reports out of Minneapolis, you know, why is it they, they, they have these problems from time to time? You know, you have that Haskins thing, and it just, it's just every five years or something, you know, problematic ends up with that school. Are men hopeless? That's it comes down to that. Just come on, get yeah. control, get a little yeah. bit of control. But now, know? Tom, now a story comes out today from the beat reporter from the University yeah, of Minnesota yeah. and the Star yes. Tribune that that he was doing this two, three years yeah. ago, and I keep thinking to myself. Can you believe that an athletic director would do that to a public person, who yeah. runs, to anybody, but especially to a media member? And it's we're not even talking about it. It's just stupid. Unbelievable. Yeah. All right, your Minnesota Vikings beat Pittsburgh 14-3 uh, to in the Hall of Fame game. Did you watch? Did you care? Did it mean anything? <laughs> it didn't mean a whole lot to me because... I mean, the, the, no, but no starters really played more than a series. It was exciting. To Teddy see Bridgewater looked field. great, though, didn't he? Oh yeah, Teddy looked great, five of six and forty-four yards in his first drive. But I, I do think the expectations are high. But they got to find some guys that are going to step into some key roles. I think what we talked about earlier in the show: defense wins championships with NDSU. I like Mike Zimmer. Yeah. I like that defensive yeah. approach, and I think that in itself gives us franchise some hope. Yep. All right. Last one for all of you: straight out of Compton comes out this weekend. Are you going to go see it? <laughs> I don't think so. Huh? Not for me. No. Not a big NWA no. fan? No. What? <laughs> Not this weekend, but I will go see it. Because honestly, I was in high school. Those guys, yeah. I mean, I was one of those suburban kids that thought they were really cool. So I'm going to go see the movie just because I wanted to know the real story. All right. Very good. All right. When we come back on Bench Warmers, our winging it question will go into the crowd here at Buffalo Wild Wings when we come back. Bench Warmers on Midco Sports Network is presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. Welcome back to Bench Warmers. We go into the crowd here at Buffalo Wild Wings for a winging it question every week. And for that, let's go to Alex Heinert. Hey, thanks, Tom. I'm here with Eric, who is from Fargo, who is going to NDSU for his Masters right now. Not surprisingly, Eric's got a question about the Bison. Yeah, my question is for you guys, what do you think about Carson Wentz prospects for the NFL draft? And will that affect his year here at NDSU? All right, good question, Eric. Back to you guys. All right, fellas, a little twist on the Carson Wentz question from Eric. Thank you for the question, Eric. Will the talk about him being an NFL, NFL prospect affect how he plays this season? Or is this kid just so solid that it won't hurt him? Yeah, you know, here's what I'll tell you about Carson Wentz, and I think this says it all. After a game last year, I think it was a Weber State game where he really didn't play as well as he thought, he came back, he got on the plane, and immediately loaded up the game film and yeah. started to evaluate himself, and evaluate himself late into the night when he got home. I mean, that, that's a kid who just, I think, is pretty focused. Uh, he went to the Nike Elite Camp in yeah. Oregon, and that's, you're talking the elite guys, and you're being taught by former NFL Trent Dilfer's there. If, if anybody can handle the expectations, the weight of that, I think it's Carson Wentz. Jeff mentioned earlier in the show how smart this kid is. He knows what's going to be said about him, and he's all about the team. He knows exactly that they don't want to be the ones to stop this run. He doesn't want to be the guy at the helm to to end the, the possible streak of winning five in a row. And we've seen people in big time programs, Jameis Winston, guys like that, that have just totally let it go to their head. He might be on the other end of the spectrum so. though from guys like this. He's, right? still got a, he's still got a ton to prove, I think, to himself. Because I, I believe in his eyes, he's gonna, he went back through all his cut-ups last year in the offseason. And he saw places where he missed yep. windows and throws and things, and, and he saw that. He thinks he can get a lot better. I just, don't get, that ego. I just don't get that I just, when you talk to him, you, you don't feel he that doesn't ego. Have it. Yeah, no. I just don't. I don't see it. I mean, he didn't throw a touchdown pass in the first two games. Then threw 25 in the last 14. Yeah. So we're talking the production just went like this over the last stretch of the season. Another Bison advantage. Great. Glad to hear it. <laughs> when we come back, the uh, poll question: Will North Dakota State run the, uh, the table this year in football and win another national championship? Bench Warmers on Midco Sports Network is presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. Our poll question this week, will North Coast State's football team finish the season undefeated? Regular season, everything, win the national championship. 47% say yes, 53% say no, that they will at least lose a game, which wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. But <laughs> Some people might be. Come on, Bison fans. Are you a little surprised by that or not? Uh, no. 40, I'm in the 47%. Too many questions on defense. Yeah, I, I think they lose, they'll lose. they lose a game. Maybe two this year. I do. In the regular season? Yes, in the in the regular season. Serious, yes. And then get beat in the playoffs. I, I don't know about I, I see in the, in the regular season. Conference is super good. Yeah, I think, I think the FCS overall, the top teams, may be a little, even a little bit better. It's going to be a tough road, man, through the playoffs. Again. All right. Very tough. 
Have a great year covering the Bison, fellas. Appreciate you being here. This yeah, thank you. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Good luck with the high school coverage. You got it. We will see you next week in Sioux Falls on Bench Warmers.